Hey you guys, what's up? Solder here with a, another tutorial. Uh, I can't say that this is going to be a quick tutorial, but I am going to try my best to uh, to make it as concise as I can. What we'll be making today is a web bar. Now this is good for web design, of course. Um, also, you see it a good bit on YouTube channel backgrounds. Um, mostly partner backgrounds. I don't know why you would want it on uh, a non-partner background, but I'm going to show you guys how to make this. And I just noticed something. One of these texts is off. I think it's the second one. Nope. That's it. And this one. There we go. Center. All right. So. I have all of this, um, I'll probably give you guys a download link to this so you guys can just check out exactly what I did, but uh, we're going to try to recreate it. So first thing we want to do is we want to grab the rounded rectangular tool and I have it set uh, for a radius of 10 pixels, that just gives it a more rounded edge. So let's drag out uh, a nice size, we'll do about that. Um, you want to make sure that you have a fill of a dark gray and that you don't have a stroke. I was doing something else with strokes, so let's actually uh, make this darker. Darker than that. Yeah, that looks about good. Alright, so then we're going to rasterize this layer. And we're going to add some quick layer styles to it. First, drop shadow. Uh, and second, we're going to add a bevel and emboss. We're going to throw the depth down to zero, or down to one, the size down to zero. And then what I like to do is take take this um, highlight mode and just drop it down to where you can barely see a little highlight on the top. See right there. Uh, if I put it all the way up, you'll see a nice white line, but you want to get it to a darker darker gray just so you can tell that it, it goes over all right so that's done with that what we're gonna do next is we're going to add the shadow effect now you want to create a new layer for this you right click uh, on your rounded rectangle then you're gonna hold which button is it is it control select the marquee tool and hold alt and then we're just going to deselect about half of this. Then with white in our background, we're going to hold control, hit backspace to fill that. And then we can deselect. I'm going to set that to, I think, 5. Yep, that's right. Okay, so now we got a good base uh, buttons here. Well, a good base background button. And then now we're going to add these little indents. Now I did do a tutorial for this, uh, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But uh, let's let's zoom in real quick here, and let's add uh, some buttons. If you guys want to watch the full tutorial, then just look in my uh, my videos to find it. So uh, first off, black line, of course. And actually, I'm going to do it different. I'll do it the same way. So we we'll drag that all the way to the end here. And we want to rasterize this layer. Control J to copy it. Then Control and press once to the right. I'm selecting this. And we're going to color overlay. White. Select both layers. Combine them with Control E. And then we're going to set that mode to overlay. And that gives us this nice indent. If you back out a little bit, looks like that's clickable. So then we want to just separate this. There's no perfect way to do it. I'm just holding shift while I'm moving it, and it sort of snaps into place. It may not always do that, so just be careful. And I'm just sort of eyeballing it. I know they're not going to be perfect. But whenever you do your designs, you can do it the way you want. Alright, so now we have our indentions. And what I like to do after that is I like to just combine all these and then reset it back to overlay. Alright, so now we have our base buttons. Now what we want to do is we want to add our text. So I just add some simple text. This needs to be more 
Then about that size, let's pick, uh, I think I used Arial for this font, so we'll just pick Area, Arial. See where is it? At? Come on! I don't think I can type it in. I know I have it though. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna type simple text, and we need to make this a little bit smaller. We'll just we'll do that small, just just for the heck of it. All right. So what we want to do is I'm gonna place these here. And just do the same thing that we did with the indentions. I'm just holding shift. And if you're wondering how I'm copying it, I'm holding alt and then dragging it a little bit. And what that does is it does the same thing as control J. And then I'm just holding shift to make it lock into place. Alright, so now we have our text. Let's, uh, let's figure out what we want to do here. We don't want to add drop shadow because we want to make it look like it's on there. So what I do is I add bevel and boss and I just put these back down just like our our top thing and then I add a little bit of uh, actually did I add? No I didn't add bevel and boss alright so you just add a gradient overlay and then drop the opacity so that you get a nice little little bit of shadow there and then what I also do is put a stroke of one and what you can do here is you can also mess with this instead of having it just so black as it is. So now that we have that, you can simply hold Alt and then just drag it, drag the effect to each of the text layers, or you can click the first one, hit copy, and then click the second one and hit paste. Whatever you want to do, I find that the just holding Alt and dragging it on there is a lot easier, but you, you can do what you want. Now, I'm going to combine these in a group, Control G, and I'm going to rename this group uh, Text. And then I also want to put all of this in another group and call that Button Bar 2. Okay, we're not done yet. We still need to do this indent that looks like you have one clicked. So let's do that now. Simply zoom in. You want to select all that you want to indent. Don't select this part right here. You don't want to select this white part, but you do want to select this black part. So you want to come up right in the corner. Don't select this top, the top part either. I keep pointing to my screen with my finger and then realizing that you guys can't see that. So, all right. And then we want to go all the way over and all the way down to the bottom here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control backspace or control I don't think control delete does it so just control backspace then you're gonna go right here drop the fill to zero and then you want to add an inner shadow to that put the opacity all the way up put that on normal put the distance to zero and the size to 11 11 or 12 I mean heck you could even do let's just do 15 just for that bit. Alright, so now we zoom out and you can see that that fits in just right. You could also do it on this. I'll show you guys what it looks like if you just stretch it up just a little bit. Um, I, I just don't think it looks quite as good. Uh, I don't know, you guys can decide what you want to do there. And then you can move this, of course. Um, I'm not sure if I spaced everything perfectly, so it might not fit just right, but I'm go in here and pull this over. Maybe on a little bit further there. And there you have it. That is the that is how you make a web bar that you can use on a website or a partnered background. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you learn something and um, if you'd like to suggest future tutorials, make sure to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time.